Hello viewers, this is a testimony of Sister Valdegur of France, who died and encountered the Lord Jesus. Through this testimony, you will understand that this life is not promised tomorrow, we are just passing by. Hope you stick to the end to understand her full experience. Now, I proceed. My life was all about money and I was willing to sleep with men for money. But where I went after death, I brought neither my body nor my money. My body was there unable to move, yet I lived my life satisfying the desires of the flesh, ignoring my soul that had become a wandering spirit. I rejected God in my life, but this very God I rejected came for me in the afterlife. Everything is vanity in this world, only our soul that matters. I died and found myself out of my body. I became a wandering spirit, unable to enter into contact with the living. Judgment was looming, for I died in my sin, and despite my sin, the Lord God came for me. The Lord began to show me the way I died. He said, My daughter, before your death, you were three, the spirit, the body, and the soul. The spirit is me, the soul is you, and the body is just an envelope. The body you see sleeping there in your room is just an envelope. The true you is your soul. 1 Thessalonians 5.23 and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Brother, your body is not you. It is an envelope that allows you to touch the material world. When you die, this body will return to dust. It is futile and vain. The Lord said to me, Understand that when you can move and walk, it's my spirit that moves you. I said, Lord, when we walk, it's your spirit that animates us. He said, Of course, it's my spirit in you, but you don't love me. Therefore, learn to love me, for my spirit is in you, causing you to live. I live in you, but you always saddened me. I was saddened by all your evil actions. When you wake up and stand on a new day to go to work, it's because of my strength. Acts 17.28 For in him we live and move and have our being. As certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. I said, If that is the case, Lord, you were seeing everything I was doing. The Lord said, Though I was in you but in order to enter your heart, I needed your permission. I was in you waiting for you to allow me to lead you, but you ended up leading me instead of me leading you. You were walking in disorder, stifling me. The Lord showed how I was going to hotels with men. Seeing these scenes, I began to cry. I said, Lord, why have you not stopped me? And I did not know all this truth. The Lord said, I do not force people in the world. You did not know these things because you never wanted to know. I have placed two ways for you humans, and I chose for you the right way, but you chose the wrong way. Brother, I lived a life of fornication, which affects the body, the soul, and spirit, which is the Lord. That is why the Bible says we should love the Lord with our heart, our thought, and our strength. That way we won't sadden the Lord. The Lord said, The reason people feel remorse is because my spirit is saddened in them. People only regain peace after recognizing and correcting their way. My spirit always fights with men to cause them to renounce so that they will have peace. A lot of men have no love. I came to save men because of love, but you don't love one another. I have prepared this eternal kingdom of heaven for men, but men have no love for me and they are going to the place of torment. Then the Lord took me to where the poor live in huts. As they wake up in the morning, they were saying in their hearts, Lord, have we come to the world to experience suffering? Do you really exist? And do you even know us? The Lord said, look at these people, I know them. And the most important thing I gave them is the breath of life for men to sleep. Like when you were trying to wake up your dead body by yourself, but you have failed. These poor people are breathing, but they are asking questions. The issue is that people are in hurry, but I do things according to my timing. Ecclesiastes 3 to 1. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. I said, Lord, I did not know these things. Forgive me. The Lord said, My daughter, your prayer for forgiveness is not reaching my ears because I am not the God of the dead and you have died in your sins. I don't deal with the dead. But if the living prays for your soul, I would hear them and save you. I cannot deal with you because I have no relationship with the dead. I said,
Please, Lord, give my mother a vision so that she would pray for me, because she often has visions. The Lord said, Even if I give the vision, she would not discern it, because I tried to speak to you Christians in dreams and visions, but you are distracted. You don't discern my message. My daughter, you just need the prayer of the living for me to intervene and save you. I cried and said, Lord, forgive me and give me a chance. The Lord said, There is no forgiveness after death. It's those who are walking and living on the earth that are entitled to my forgiveness. When they confess, I will forgive them. If they pray, I will answer them. But I act in my own timing. People are in hurry and they want to manipulate me to do things quickly for them. I said, Lord, my condition is difficult. I am suffering. I would not be able to bear it. Have mercy on my soul. I am hungry, but I am unable to eat, and I am thirsty. Yet my family is completely unaware of what I am going through. Please tell them not to come here. This is suffering. The Lord touched me on the shoulder and said, I have loved you, but why have you rejected me? The Lord was in tears for my soul that was lost. The Lord was calling me by my name. This is a loving God that is sweet. Despite the fact I died with my sins, his love was staggering. The Lord said, I was always with you, but you ignored me and walked in your own way. He was speaking with me in tenderness. The love that the Lord showed me, even my own father, never show me that love. I said, Lord, you are calling me by my name as if you have known me for a very long time. The Lord said, I know every single man living in the world, and I know the number of the hair that is on the head of every man in the world. The Lord took me to a public club where people were dancing to profane music. The Lord said, These songs did not glorify me. Why were you dancing and singing this song? At that moment, I tried to shout to these people to stop dancing to these worldly songs. I said, Give up these types of life and stop hearing this music. You got to listen to me. If you don't believe, go check my body. I am dead. The Lord said, They won't hear you. I said, Lord, who are they going to listen to? The Lord said, They would not listen to anybody. I said, I want to go and warn them. Then I got to the table where they were drinking in order to bring it down and scatter everything. But I was unable to touch any physical matter, for my hand was grabbing empty space. Then the Lord took me to a place where people were quarreling. The Lord said, Why do you quarrel? The world belongs to me. I have been asking you people to love one another. I tried to preach to the people, but they could not hear me. I became animated by a strong desire to proclaim the good news of the gospel to the living, but there was no contact between the living and the dead. I said, Lord, these people who are alive are not preaching the gospel. Please let me go and preach the good news to the sinner. But the Lord said, You are no longer alive. No one will listen to you. Then the Lord took me to a place to see musical celebrities preparing their songs and concerts. I saw how people venerated them. Then the Lord said, Glory belongs to me. No one will share the glory with me for glory is mine. I won't mention the names of these musicians, but they have to repent otherwise. They will have no place of rest beyond the grave. I said to the Lord, You don't want us to listen to profane songs. What about Christian songs? The Lord said, Many of them do not belong to me. They have signed covenants with the other one, but they are using my name so that when my children listen to their songs, they will be weakened. These songs are not for my glory. I was stunned to discover that even those who sing for God also resorted to occultism. I used to think that those who sing for God are good. The Lord said, They are singing for their own glory and not for my glory. They want to become famous and stars. The Lord took me to churches. I thought they were good. But the Lord said, 85% of these churches do not belong to me. They are using my name to get money. I saw preachers on the pulpits. They were preaching and performing miracles. But the Lord said, I don't know them. I am asking leaders to preach repentance and to prepare the church. I am coming back any moment. From now on, People are looking to the sky while I am in them. I walk with them, and I am in them. Many of these leaders have resorted to occultism to perform miracles and draw the crowds for profit. Brother, I was a wandering spirit suffering from hunger and thirst, but I had no contact with the world of the living. 
and the Lord could not hear my prayer, because he is not the God of the dead. Finally, I saw my sister near me, she went to drop the kid at school, and she was back home to get ready to go to work. I said, please, Lord, get near me to my body, so that she would see that I am dead. Otherwise, they will take me to the hospital that will declare me dead, and they will take my body to the mortuary. Please, Lord, do something, don't abandon me. I want to get back in the body. I was sitting beside my body crying for my soul. I had such pity for my soul. I said, really? I died just like that. I did not even get what I was searching in life. I cried bitterly and said, Lord, since you have refused to answer my prayer, I accept my fate. I am waiting for people to notice my death. Life is vain. Everything is vanity. Today I see that God exists and he is real. I said, really, this body has deceived me. It is vanity. I did all things for this body. But it will be taken to the mortuary, and it will rot yet I gave it all ignoring my soul. I began to preach to members of my family, exhorting them to love God and follow him. The Lord said, you should have done that when you were alive. You are already dead, and it's too late. I said, Lord, I know, but let me do it. I said, Lord, yesterday I was fine and in good health, but today I am dead. People would accuse my parents of killing me in a witchcraft sacrifice for I was not sick. Have pity on my parents. You said you would come like a thief and you came to take my life when I did not expect. Please give me a chance. At that moment, money was useless. What mattered was the breath of life, which is a big gift. I said, Lord, if you return me to life, all my life, I promise to testify about you like a mad woman, and I will stay in your presence. I wish to be alive and be poor. I don't need wealth for what counts as the breath of life so that I can correct my mistake and prepare for the kingdom of God. The Lord said, I have prepared the kingdom of heaven for you, my children, but you are not entering. Behold, look. At that moment, I saw a long table that went beyond the sight and everything was ready on the table. The Lord said, All these countless empty chairs are for you, my children, but you don't love me, and you are going to the other side. I said, People don't know this thing. Allow me to go back to warn the world about these things. The Lord said, Even if you speak, they won't believe you. I said, Lord, just allow me to speak to them, even if they would not listen to me. The Lord said, even if you bring a dead man back to life in the cemetery, people are refusing to repent. At that moment, I began to talk to myself. I said, this pain is eternal. I am lost forever. I cried while singing to the Lord. Finally, the Lord held my spirit like a ball and introduced me to my body. When I realized that I was in my body, I woke up and rose like a mad person, and I began to pray. When Naomi saw me praying, she thought I was crazy because she never saw me praying. Thanks for watching, and we hope that you will like this video and subscribe to get notifications whenever we post our upcoming videos in the days to come. See you around. Shalom.